So when God gave me this teaching, all right, uh, enmeshment is, is, a, is, is, is a dysfunctional behavior in a family. It can be all different levels of it. It can be slight to, to very extreme. And in enmeshment, you have a controller or a dictator or a stressor. You can call them these different things. And so uh, uh, you have to conform to that controller. And so Jesus set us free. That is a picture of the old covenant where we were under control. And Jesus set us free from that. And the, now we're in the life of grace. And so in the life of grace, Jesus, we're free. The Bible says stand fast in the liberty wherewith you are set free. You're free to have your own choices, to have the feelings you think, and have your own thoughts in the kingdom of God. But in a mesh environment, you're not allowed to be who you are in Christ. You have to be who the controller or the dictator says you have to be. And you have to feel what they say you have to feel. And you have to make the choices that they say you make. Or otherwise, there's, there is abuse that's a part of that. You either verbal abuse that happens, or emotional abuse, or physical, or sexual. But there is abuse because they expect you to totally surrender. And this is adult children to adult parents. And so Jesus totally set us free from that in the new covenant, that now I'm, I'm in that place. And we see that in Abraham, as we're under the covenant of Abraham. He said no to that enmeshment. That's what he said. And he entered into that covenant of grace. And we're under that covenant of grace. We're under the Abrahamic covenant of grace where he stepped into the kingdom of God. That's an Old Testament is a picture of stepping into the kingdom of God, going to that land flowing with milk and honey. And we know that Paul in uh, Philippians 3 said no to enmeshment, him himself. And he said yes, totally. So so now in the new covenant, we're to be 100% in the kingdom of God. And that's what we're supposed to be. And so we saw Paul making that decision. I'm going to be 100% in the kingdom of God. And so that's what we're saying. God is for family, but he wants us to be a healthy family. And then when I say no to those ungodly ties and those fears and that control, and I I embrace who I am because I am born of the word of God. And I humbly accept that. And I embrace that as my identity. As Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Well, we get 100% connected to the word, the new person we are. The old person does not exist anymore. And it has vanished away because I've come into the kingdom. And when I'm 100% in that, that when they see me, they see Jesus. They see that he already uh, uh, totally completed uh, all the work that needs to be done so that I can live a stress-free life in the kingdom of God and that I'm now a receiver of what he's done. I'm in what he has done in his works that it flows through me. And so this is what we have to do is coming into our new covenant of grace. And that's what God is saying and leaving that, that old life of the addiction. Everybody comes into the kingdom, even though you think you don't, you do, <laughs> with something of the old nature that needs to go in your life. Is, and that is an addiction in the soulish realm because in the, the realm of enmeshment, you are soulish. That's what the, word, the medical science calls it, and that's what God said in the dream, is that you, in enmeshment, your soul, your soulish realm is totally controlled. And we need to stay in our liberty in the new covenant, right? Of our freedom to be who God made me to be, to be able to make choices that I, in my own self, am free to make and to have the thoughts that I have thought to have. Right or wrong, I have liberty in the kingdom, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Of course, I decide to choose God's thoughts, but I have the freedom to choose that. Praise God. And so we see, now just a quick review here, is that we see that in, in uh, Jesus' life. He was 100% God, but he was 100% man. And so we know in Mark chapter 3, he was out 
healing the sick, raising the dead, praying for people, and casting out demons. And so the religious crowd said, he is demon-possessed. Well, it says that his mother uh, and, uh, heard their comments, and uh, so you know that Mary knew he was the son of God, but she maybe apparently felt like he, they, she was relieving the religious crowd that he was going the wrong way, and he was, he was demon-possessed. And, of course, the brothers were not believers. They said they didn't believe, and they, so they decided to go get him and take charge of his life. Well, what happened? Jesus, 100% man, said no to a meshment. He said no. And he did not go out and see his, his mother and his brothers. And, he, and they said, they're out there, they want to. And he didn't even go out and get entangled with that. But he said, well, who is my mother, my brother? Who is my sister? Those that do the will of God. And Matthew says that they were, he was looking at the disciples. Hallelujah. And so we see that Jesus was saying, I'm 100% in the kingdom of God. I'm 100% with the Father God. And so who he is is who I am. I only do what I hear my father, uh, 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 what I see my father do, and I only say what I hear my father say. And so we see that he was that example, but he also set us free from enmeshment in our lives. And so anyway, so as we look at this, we have to understand that what God is saying. And so uh, all that come into the kingdom, you have some type of soulish addiction that you're dealing with. And we read this, so don't live in deception. <laughs> you know, want to get free of that. Okay, so Ephesians 3, uh, 2, 3 says this, all, all of us, how many of us? All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature. And that word there is addictions, gratifying those addictions of our sin nature in the soulish realm and following its desires and what? Thoughts. And, uh, and, and uh, like the rest, we were natures of objects of wrath. So, so then when I came into the kingdom of God, got born again, entered into a new person that never existed before, and let go of the old person, hallelujah, but law wants to bring you back into who you were, the old man, right? And get you again to connect to those addictive behaviors in the soulish realm. But we say no to that, and so we have to be declared now, I'm 100% in the kingdom. I am made in your likeness and image, God. I'm a person that did not exist before, but now I'm born of the word of God. I have God's DNA in me, and I embrace you as my father. Hallelujah. And I'm citizen of heaven. I'm a member of God's household. And I enter into my identity of what I am in the kingdom. And my family is those that do the will of God. Now, it might be our earthly family that does that too. But you have to understand you don't abandon your family. Now you're able to bring the kingdom of God to your loved ones and to the family and to this world because you're not connected to the addictions of this world and the, and, and, and the abusive behavior, you've been set free. So the power of the kingdom now can come to your families and to your friends and to where you're working and to those kind of things. And so let's go on and see what it says here. Okay. We are to enter totally, and this is a not 99%, 100% into the kingdom of God, into the life that of grace that Jesus has already done for us and provided. Colossians 3.3 3 says this, your crucifixion with Christ. So you have to see the cross. Christ hung on that cross, but you have to see that you hung on there with him. Your old person, so you were crucified with him, has severed the ties to this life. All right? And I have something here that God just put in my heart today. Okay, this is a tie 
to the addictions of the old life, to the addictions of the family, to those addictions, okay? And But what happens in the kingdom? What do we say? I severed all ties. I am se I'm free from it. I'm not tied. So the power of the addictive world, the power of that soulish realm of being controlled or being dictated to is now been severed. It, and the abuse that would come if you don't obey, the fear that would come if you don't obey, has been severed. It, uh, it, it, it can't. Those things cannot now come upon you and bring fear and bring pain and bring hurt in your life. They've been severed, and you have to see it and agree. I've been severed. I've been disconnected from this world, the life here, right? That's what it's saying. Hallelujah. And now your true life is what? Hidden in God, in Christ. Now you are truly connected 100%. You're in God in Christ, the anointed one, the word of God, the Holy Ghost, and the power that is in the kingdom now is flowing through your life. And you come with power in your life on this earth. You see, you see miracles happen. You see healing happen. You see the lost getting saved. You see you're able to bring the love of God to uh, dysfunctional behaviors. You're bringing God into those situations that they will see that when they see you, they see Jesus. Praise God. It goes on to say, a hallelujah. So we're tied to God in Christ, and that is the life and life more abundantly now. The resurrection, abundant life that he says we enter into is flowing through you. And now because you severed, the enemy cannot steal in your life your joy. Hallelujah. You cannot kill and cannot destroy in your life. You've been severed from that. You're free to bring the life of God in situations now. And so it uh, goes on to say this in Colossi oh, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.15, and we've heard this, but it's so important to now visualize this and what this means. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, being in him, He's the head. He made covenant with the Father God. And so covenant's between him and Jesus. And we have a blood covenant now. And I, he's the head and I'm the body. And I'm in him. I'm connected. The word and, it, and, and it's over me. And, I have, and I'm a new creation now. I need to find out. I need to embrace that new person that I am. And let the word show me, show me who I am in Christ, that word. And what is my identity in it? And what is my destiny in it? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I get so excited about this. And it goes on to say, all things have passed away. I've been severed from them. I see it's done. It has no power over me. I put faith in it. It's gone. And all things are now become new, 100% connected to the kingdom of God. Colossians 3, 4 says this, and as Christ himself is seen in who he really is, so you really will, be, will reveal who you really are. So you'll see him. The Bible talks about it as a mirror. When you're totally connected to him, you see him as he is, then it reveals to you who you are. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. And it goes on. So we see we're in the covenant of grace, the new grace that we're entered into his rest. And it goes on to say, for you are now one with him in his glory. Oh, this should excite us. And then Colossians uh, 3.11 says, for this new creation life. You're new. It's exciting. New life. Your nationality makes no difference now. Let it go. That's what Abram said. God said, let it go. Okay? Nor your, I can't say that word. That's okay. So I'll say what it means. It means your culture and your, and your traditions. Does it no more? 
Your education doesn't matter. Your ec economic status is not important. They matter nothing now in the kingdom of God. It's all about him and what he's given us and what I receive from him. And uh, for it is Christ that means everything now as he lives in every one of us. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Some people have come out of, and some of you that are watching, you came out of horrible, horrible enmeshed situation, horrible uh, controller of the family, and where you were verbally, or you've been emotionally, or you've been physically abused in your life, and you've in it to, to live in it, you've had to step into survival state, uh, uh, don't harm me, don't hurt me, I'll do what you want, I'll, I'll let go of me and who I am, and I'll just become who you want me to be. That's what's happened to so many people, but they come into the kingdom, and they're still bringing that in, and they're still living in that. God gave this message to set his people free. So, we go into the codependency comes out of enmeshment. Every addictive behavior of the soul comes from the foundation of enmeshment. So in codependent, it is this. It's always a symptom of abandoning your in, inner person. You abandon that, and you come into the kingdom, and you, ha you abandon the inner person of who you are in Christ. You, you, you disconnect from it all. And so you neglect it because of the abuse, of the fear of abuse, because you don't know that you need to sever it and let it go and don't have faith in that old person. Don't keep going back and reliving that old person. It doesn't exist anymore. And let it be gone. But what the Holy Spirit shows you, that you have some garbage and junk in your life, let that out of your life. Don't let that garbage control your life, right? And so this is what it is. You should only, this is the behavior that you should only be in in emergencies, okay? And this is it. it let's say in an emergency, a killer comes into the house, and he's threatening to kill everyone, all right? So what, what happens in an emergency that God created us to be, we comply, we surrender, we submit, just don't hurt me, I'll do whatever you say, I'll be what you want me to be, and that's, that is the state that we go in, and it's called survival state. But guess what? To an, a person that's lived in an extreme enmeshment, there's all different uh, uh, signs of it that we need to be free, of course. We totally connect 100% in the kingdom, then we're totally free from any ties to the abuse of this life, okay? The enemy has no power over your life. But a person that is in that state and come from extreme abuse or even whatever, you know, that, is, that has been an enmeshment home, you know, they live. This is normal for them. Every day they wake up in a survival state. And they come into the kingdom, and, and who are you? Who, I don't know. I have I've left me. I, I, what, how can I be a wallflower? How can I just submit to everybody around me? And please don't hurt me. Don't abuse me. I'll do whatever you say. So they're not led by the Holy Ghost. They're led by the fear of the survival state that they haven't let go of. Let go of it. Amen. Just can't, they say, no, I want that gone out of my life. I reconnect to who you made me in Christ Jesus, and I'm 100% in the kingdom, and I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God and not the fears of abuse. And so that codependent is a state of survival. And it's because you've left you. That's what it is. And so in codependence, you, of course, we've left, we lost our inner person. We left who we are in Christ Jesus because we didn't know how to get free of the attacks of the enemy, of the abuse that, that the enemy brings to us. And so we have to see we're severed. I'm 100% in the kingdom. 
I've let go of my culture. I'm a member of God's household. My family is those that do the will of God. I'm in, I'm in, live and move in his being, and I'm 100% connected to the word of God that is able to save my soul. It's not our spirit we're worried about. It's our soul. Our soul is what needs to be totally connected to the word. Our spirit is already. It's fine. Hmm. So, so in, in a codependency, you don't see into the invisible, the, the, in, the unseen of the kingdom of God, and you're not creating because you're living in fear and living out here. Please don't hurt me, don't, you know. And so it says here, seeing into the unseen, because the Bible says we don't look at what we see. We look at what we don't see. We look at the word of God. What we see is temporal, but what we don't see is eternal. And so in codependent life, that person can be, even though they're in the kingdom, uh, they don't see into the unseen, and the, the invisible, and that helps us make right decisions by the Spirit of God. There is no such power in, that there's no, there, they don't live in the, the power that is in the invisible. There's power in the kingdom and in that visible. Because faith, faith is this. Faith steps into the unseen and the invisible, and it's already now. It's already done. And I live not by what's happened out here, not by any sickness, disease, not by any emotional attachment to the abuse or the soulish realm of enmeshment. No, I've set those, I've cut those ties, and I step into the unseen where there is no time in faith, and I call forth what God says I have, who I am in Christ, and I call and I feast on the treasures of heaven. I'm in the life of grace that's already done, already mine. I'm an heir of God, joint heir with Christ. I am, hallelujah, all that he says I am. I have his names. I'm his precious child. He set me totally free. Now, this is important. It is not our big problems that defeat it. It's the little vision we have. And so in enmeshment, and then, then you get into the codependent life, there is no vision except pain and hurt and tragedy. All right? And so, so it says the big vision can, can overcome any problems. And if you have no vision, you have no strength. And so people that, are, that have left their, their inner person and they're, they're totally connected to the fear of the pain out there and love casts out all fear, but they're, they're afraid and they're living in this survival state, okay? They are so overwhelmed by it that they have no, pro, no power because they're controlled by the other, by the enemy in it all. They have no power to overcome. Mmm. So turn to your neighbor. This is good preaching. Hallelujah. So they're always guarding themselves from the, uh, the hurt of the environment. All right? Overcome. So we are, and of course we said this, your crucifixion with Christ, you were crucified with him, have severed the ties of this life. It's been broken. And you are now in your true life, hidden away in God in Christ. And so the Bible says this in Galatians uh, 5.20. I like this translation because it helps us to understand our old identity, our old identity has been co-crucified with Christ. You have to see yourself. When he hung on the cross, you hung on the cross with him. That old self. And it no longer lives. It's vanished. It's gone. You have to see it gone. Poof. No more. Just like the vision I had from God. He said, turn around and look behind you. And there was a white slate. Nothing was on it. He said, well, it's vanished. It's gone. It's wiped away. And now find your new person in Christ Jesus. That never existed before either. But now exists. And so now the essence of your new life is no longer mine. 
but for the anointed one lives his life through me. Now, the, I'm in him and his anointing and his life and the word, and we all have our uniqueness in God that we represent on this earth is now living through my life, he says. We live in union as one. Our new life empowers, empowered by the faith of the Son of God now, that faith of the Son of God in me, who loved me and gave himself for me, disp dispense his life into mine. Hallelujah. So there's all different ways that the codependent app happens. It's whatever that can be an alcoholic addiction, a workaholic, drug addictions in a home and, and the abuse. It could be a mother or father that is uh, uh, hysterical controllers or abusive controllers, and uh, they're, they're dictators, right? And so we see all of this. Okay, let's move on to it. Anyone in a family becomes controlling to the point of being a threat to the other members of the family. So they feel the threat of abuse. Uh, hallelujah. I can use this example. I came from physical abuse and so and, and many other abuses in my life. So growing up, what was it? I was in a state of survival in my life. That was normal every day. Just don't cause no trouble. Yes, sir. Let, you know, let's just be the perfect child, okay? And so, anyway, and, I, and so in the kingdom, I had to get free of all that and, and come into the kingdom 100%, of course, and cut those ties. My, and so, and I love my father, so I'm just sharing with you. And uh, the only time I saw my father growing up until my mother got a divorce was when he came home and we all got it. Okay, because he came in that rage. And he had, it was demons. He wasn't saved. I didn't come from a born-again family. And so, he came, so once, once God said, now he needs to come back into your life, you need to bring the kingdom to him. And so, so sure enough, I, he came back into our life. He came and stayed with us. And he just had a delightful personality and all of that. And so one morning he woke up in our home, and I could feel discerning a spirit. I felt that spirit of physical abuse was manifesting in his life. And, but I also felt in my own life the survival state wanted, to, wanted me to enter in like, OK, if I do everything perfect and, God, and he, he won't manifest, it won't happen, it won't happen. And I, I, I said, God, Holy Spirit, let me see that moment. And I said, absolutely not. I'm free from that. And so I didn't do it. But as the day went on, you know, once that spirit's operating, it's going to manifest. It has to complete its assignment. And so sure enough, the day everything went wrong, everything went wrong for my dad. And it was just everything going wrong. We went to the restaurant, and the waitress came, and she put the ketchup, ketchup bottle down on the table. And it was a little bit, you know, noise. And my dad, that was it. He just exploded in the restaurant. And everybody, everybody heard him. And that spirit had its manifestation. Once it fully manifested, everything quieted down. And then he's, then he's apologizing. He always did that. He always apologized afterwards, you know, and was just feeling bad. But then he was back to, you know, we got to lead him to the Lord. The presence of God just filled the place when we prayed, prayed for him to receive Jesus. But we were able to bring the kingdom to him and the unconditional love of God because we weren't under that. Imagine if I was in that state. I'd have to ask him to leave. Right? I couldn't handle him being there because the fear of being tormented and abused was heavy. When I talk about physical abuse, it was, it was bad. That's all I have to tell you. It was bad. The last time I was physically abused, I was six years old, and it was bad. Okay, so move on. But, you know, hallelujah. So we become codependent to the stressor, 
and that's what happens, or the controller or the abuser, and this behavior is called survival state and only used in emergency, but in a codependent state, it, is, it becomes the normal everyday behavior. Hallelujah. The normal state of a codependent is survival state, and it's not what God wants us to live in, right? I, they want me to be done, but I'm not done. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Just quickly finish. Uh, threats actually occur in that form of abandonment. So you, because of the threats that happen, you abandon yourself. And what do you do? The behavior of your, you leave your inner person, and your behavior is denial of the inner person, totally sever that, the Christ that you're supposed to be living in, you dislocate, your dislocation from your inner person, depression, you depress that inner person uh, because of the fear. You're being controlled by fear, and you withdraw from that inner person, and you enter into, a, people can enter into a implosive anger, and that's the worst kind of anger because you're smiling on the outside, but you're full of offense and bitterness and hatred towards the person. And that's where sometimes in families, they end up killing their parents because it grows to the place that it has to manifest. And so we need to sever and come into our new life 100% and be totally free and healthy. I'm able to just... So love my family and see I've been able to lead them all to the Lord <laughs> that didn't know Jesus and uh, you know most of them didn't and uh, just one knew the Lord nobody else did and we were able to lead Tom's family to the Lord so Ephesians 4 24 and to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within you as your new life so you embrace that totally right and live in union with him. That's where your life is now, in the kingdom of God. Feasting on, say this, feasting on the treasures of heaven. Being led by your Holy Spirit now, right? And you are now, you okay, for God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness. And you now belong to him in the realm of his holiness. So I need to end there. I got so many more scriptures on this. But you got the gist of it. Hallelujah. So let's just pray right now. And let's all just agree and agree, just agree with me as we're praying that, Father God, now we sever ourselves from this life. God, now in the name of Jesus, we by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus, you walk through and sever those connections to this life because we see that we, were, we hung on the cross with Jesus. Our old person died with him in the name of Jesus now. And Father God, now we totally connect into and humbly accept the word of God that's planted in us, and we connect to our inner person in Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. We connect to our Father God and that DNA that we are his child and we are born of him. We're 100% connected to that. We're 100% connected to the kingdom of God. And we let go of this culture. We let go of our nationalities. We let go of the things of this earth. And we step into the, the kingdom of God and our family, whether black, whether brown, whether yellow, whether white, whether red, doesn't matter. Now I'm in the family of God, and my family is those that do the will of God. And I'm knitted together in Christ Jesus now with the family of God. God, now I wave goodbye to that old life. I see it severed, and it has no power over me. And I see now that I'm able to bring the kingdom of God, the grace of God, the Holy Ghost, the resurrection power to this earth to be a blessing. That you said that when we let go of the other, we will be a blessing to this whole earth. Our name will be great, and we'll be a great nation in the kingdom of God, bringing this to this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, there's God moving.
People are getting free. You that are watching online, you are getting free right now. In Jesus' name, totally. Let the Holy Ghost heal, heal you of the pain and let go of that. Now, see it gone, that survival state. Say goodbye to it. It's not yours no more. You enter into the rest of the kingdom. You enter into that place that you are sheltered of the Most High. You're protected in him and in the power of the kingdom now. And you can live a normal life in Jesus' name. You can have an identity in Christ. You can have a destiny in Christ. And you can have an opinion in Christ. You're free. Stand fast in that liberty wherewith you were set free. Do not be a yoked again. So you can get yoked again, but don't do it. Don't be yoked again with that yoke of slavery in Jesus' name. So as you're watching and you're here, let's just pray this prayer. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And, and your son Jesus to come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.